All right, welcome to this lesson on the neuroscience of positivity. Why can't we just be positive and happy all the time? Well, that didn't pass on our genes in the past. If you look at the evolutionary framework, I mean, the happy-go-lucky ancestors, unfortunately, probably died off. And so our brains actually have a negativity bias. And you may have heard of this, but recently there was a chemical found in the brain, this little chemical messenger neuropeptide called neurotensin. And it seems to be required, at least in rodents, it seems to be required to shift the brain into a positive state that says, hey, this is a safe environment. Let me look for kind of rewarding and positive things. And the default state is to be in this negative condition of kind of fight or flight, we might say, or just thinking that things are unsafe. And this makes sense. If you look at any animal, really, birds are a great example of this. They're constantly kind of scanning for threats. And as humans, you know, it's we don't have those threats if we're lucky in our lives, but we kind of concoct them in our minds. And our brains also are default towards negative things. This reminds me of a story about the indigenous American chief who reportedly told psychologist Carl Jung that how foreigners have tense faces and staring eyes and they're always seeking something. And if you look around at like an airport or a lot of public places that aren't like a coffee shop, then people have, we kind of default to these frowny faces and kind of looking for something to do, usually looking at the phone. And why is that? Why can't we just kind of chill out? <laughs> so this is something we can actively train, and that's what we're doing here with the Fit Mind Lifestyle. And it's one reason that I've been talking so much about smiling, because you can kind of trick the brain in a way. You can fake it till you make it and put in a positive attitude into the mind. Now, it's not saying that hey, whatever happens in life, like it's all good and kind of telling yourself it's all good when it's not. It's about having a positive attitude in the observing mind, the meta-awareness that's observing what's happening and then can respond appropriately, but it's from a place of very much being okay with, what's, with whatever's happening in the moment. And that's something we can actively train and, and the smile helps with that. Actually, is kind of a funny pun. It, it reminds me that it's kind of neuroplastic surgery because the brain is neuroplastic. It can learn and change itself. The smile puts it into a, uh, yeah, it's kind of like plastic surgery that you're putting on yourself. And there was a Botox study I mentioned earlier in the course that showed that people, even when they have a fake smile from Botox, seem to be happier just from that facelift alone. My teacher, Banta, used to tell us, if you don't feel like smiling, I want you to laugh. And actually, research has shown that laughter can relax your muscles, can stimulate circulation, and it releases endorphins in, in your brain. So this is just practical advice. Like, If you don't feel a certain mood, you can change your state of body, and that, that impacts your mood. Right? There's this bi-directional feedback loop between mind and body. And often we get in our own heads in, the, in these kind of negative thought loops. And the easiest way to break out of, of it is by changing the way that our body, like the way we move our bodies or body posture or, or our, our facial expression. Positive mental states, there shouldn't be too much reason to doubt the importance of these because they just feel good. But there is research suggesting that they also contribute to physical health and cognitive function. And yeah, they just generally feel open and spacious. So we kind of know what a positive state is by how it feels. It's generally pro-social. Generally, we feel good towards others and we want to help others more. And so we are, we're also benefiting the world around us by having this mindset. But here's the key point from a mental fitness standpoint. Not only do the positive states feel good, carry less tension, help the world around us, but they also lead to a mind that's collected and composed. So they lead to what we'll talk about later, which is 
essentially deeper states of collectedness, of mental unity, that allow us to see and gain insights into the nature of reality, of the nature of how the mind works. So positive states are both inherently wonderful, and they're also a tool we'll use to develop deep and deep wisdom. So now as you make this a, a lifestyle, so you're training in the formal meditation, how to cultivate these positive states and what they feel like, you're kind of familiarizing yourself with them. That's actually a translation of the Tibetan word for meditation. It's gom, and it means to familiarize with the positive states and how to bring them up and then maintain them as long as possible throughout the day. So this is the four R's. Recognize the mind is now in a negative state. Release by not feeding it your attention. Relish. Relish a positive, like bring up and relish a positive state of mind. Could be something like gratitude, appreciation, metta. Metta is the one we're working with right now in the course. And then remain is to continue to feed your awareness towards that positive state. And in this case, the feeling of metta in your, in your body. And this is completely rewiring your brain all day long, whenever you remember to do that. There's a quote that I like from the ancient Pali suttas. This is Majjhima Nikaya 19, where it says, Just as a cowherd would look after his cows while resting under the shade of a tree or out in the open, one simply keeps oneself mindful of those cows. In the same way, I simply kept myself mindful of those mental qualities. So there's no like striving effort to like force these positive states. It's just once they're there, once you bring it up, you just simply watch it almost like a cowherd would watch their cows. Or um, if somebody has a better example, please comment it in, in the section, like a modern day version of that just watching. And that's all we have to do. It's, it's that simple. But of course, it's not easy. It takes training. And uh, your daily challenge today is to replace a negative outlook, a, a negative mental state with a positive one by kind of looking on the bright side. But this isn't just a psychology exercise of kind of like reframing something. That's helpful. But this is actually bringing up a feeling, a tangible feeling of gratitude or awe or appreciation or contentment or joy or enthusiasm or caring for others. And you've essentially um, yeah, replaced the negative state with a positive one. And you can think about that little neurotensin switch, even though it's just an analogy, right? We don't actually know if that's happening in the human brain. But imagine you're like switching, you're this little, flipping a little switch in the brain. And now you're in this happy state of mind. It's great. You didn't have to go seek anything or win the lottery. It's just there. All right, have a great day.